Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to math. I want to take another look. Topic 10, lesson three. This happens to be page 226. Irrational numbers on a number line. What are rational numbers? Any number that can be shown as the quotient division problem, the answer to a division problem, any number that can be shown as the quotient of two integers is called a rational number. For any integers, a and b, where b does not equal zero, in this format, the a over b format, which equals a divided by b. Let's go ahead and continue comparing these. I'm going to share with you your P page, which I want you to continue. But let's do them visually first. I'm on P page 10-3. Take a look at number one. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Here. Let's see if we can get it to zoom in. We can, look at that, it worked. Okay, so watch how we can do these visually. First, let's do them visually and then we'll do them with some numbers. Let me zoom, I'm too far zoomed in. There we go, perfect. One and negative, one and one third. There it is, it's right there on the number line. Negative 12 fifths, it's over there. So the two values are right there. Visually, just looking at this, you can see that that one, negative 12 fifths, is much smaller because it's further to the left on the number line. This number, negative one and one third, is greater because it's to the right on the number line. But pretend you don't know the answer. Pretend you didn't have a number line. We already know the answer. But if you're given the problem like this, here's number one. It says negative, oops, negative one and one third, and it's presented to you like this. You're like, I'm not quite sure, and I don't have a number line. This is one and one third, and I go, well, how many times does five go into 12? You go, this equals, it goes in there twice, which would be 10, two and two fifths, minus, don't forget about your negative, two and two fifths. So notice in this case, the denominators are still different, but you don't have to change it to a common denominator of fifteenths because you clearly see there's a difference in value in the whole numbers. So it would tell you right there that two, negative two, is further to the left on the number line that means this value is smaller. So the original values, that value is smaller. Let's do another one. First, visually. Visually using the number line. Look, I have 11 eighths and 1.88. Visually, here they are on the number line. Hopefully that's clear for you guys. Let me hit autofocus. Looks blurry. There we go, better. Here are the two values. And in an instant, you can go, well, 1.88 is larger because it's further to the right on the number line compared to that one. Too easy. 11 eighths, that is smaller. When you're presented just with values, numbers, and you go, well, how am I going to do that? 11 eighths, and you have 1.88. When you have it like this and you don't have a number line to help you, you notice you have a fraction on the left, decimal on the right. I try to go with decimals when I can, okay? Let's take a look. I see it both ways, but let's make this one here on the left, a decimal. I could go 11 divided by eight because that's what it tells me right there. 11 divided by eight. I could even add a decimal, a couple zeros, might need them, I might not. Eight goes into 11 once, one times eight is eight. 
subtract is three. I'm going to bring down the zero. Eight into 30 goes three times. Three times eight is 24. I could even stop already. I could stop right there. I could continue and bringing down digits, but I don't need to because notice I already have what I need in order to compare. On the left side, I have 1.3. On the right side, I have 1.8, 1.88. And you can clearly tell at this point of this division problem, you have what you need and that one's larger. Let's do another one. Visually, oops, there goes my, my things off the table. Let's do another one visually, this last one. Number three, and they're on the number line. We have negatives. Negative 2.83, negative, this one's too easy, okay? This is too easy in many ways. First of all, this negative two, when you compare the whole numbers, this negative two is gonna tell you it's further to the left on the number line. And sure enough, it is. There's the other value right there. Not much to do on that one. Okay, so I'd like you to do four, five, and six. They are not on the number line. They are not on the number line. So you'll have to do it with good old fashioned math. Let us look at number seven. Let's look at number seven. Number seven looks like this. There it is. Oops, sorry. There it is. I'm going to copy them down. Let me pause our video. All right, sorry guys, I had a phone call. Let us continue. Share screen, where am I? Okay, we were about to do number seven. I'm going to copy this into my journal, so watch it again. 0 0.66, negative one third. Oh, this one's too easy, five twelfths. Okay, I'm going to move my journal. The reason I say this one's so easy, at least to begin with, is but because even though you have a decimal and two fractions, and then you're presented with this question, do I change them to fractions or decimals? Well, if you notice, this one's a positive integer, okay? Uh, I should call it rational number. It's a positive rational number. And these two are negative. So right away, you know that one's the greatest, right? So again, if you are moving these least to greatest, listing them least to greatest, you already know that one's the greatest. So it's just these two. Then this is an easy decision. You see this one here is in twelfths. So you go, I just need to move this one to twelfths. I'm going to multiply this by four. I'm going to multiply that one by four. So I have minus four twelfths and five twelfths. Four twelfths, but remember they're minus. Which one's further to the right? Excuse me. Which one is further to the left on the number line? It's this one. So I would rewrite these in the original values. That's the lowest. Then this guy, then this guy, boom, boom, boom. Notice again, I used the original fraction and not the fraction that I changed it to in the answer. So I would like you to try on that page, eight and nine on your own. Do eight and nine on your own. Let us skim down. Um, why don't we, let's take a look at this one. Uh, I want you to do these word problems here. I want you to do 10 and 11 on your own, just so that you can read and interpret a table. Here's the day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Feet below the lake surface, fraction, decimal, decimal, fraction. Hmm. Same kind of problem you had from above, but now it's just in a word problem. A scientist is testing lake water at different depths order the samples of the lake from greatest to least. So careful because they said greatest to least. 
of the depth, greatest depth to the least depth. So the greatest depth would be the greatest negative number, correct? They're all negative numbers. So I want you to try that one on your own. Let's do this last one. Let's do this one. I want you to do 10 and 11. Which rational number is least? Which one is the least? I'm going to transfer these. So let's do 12 together. So you're only left with about six problems on this page. I think I'm doing about half of them. I have 0.66. I have negative four fifths. I have negative six sevenths. I have negative six tenths. I'm going to slide my journal in here. Which one is a least? There they are. Mm. What am I going to do? The first thing I notice when I look at this is I see, I want to see what they want. They want least to greatest, excuse me. They want just which one is the least. They only want to know which one's the least. And right away, I know this one's the greatest because it's positive. The rest are negative. So I go, I know it's not that one, okay? Then these other numbers, hmm, have a decimal, okay. I think we move them all to decimals. I leave this one alone. I look over here and go, what am I going to do? This one's intense. You want to move them to decimals? I think we should. If I had this as a fraction, six tenths, I'd have a 10, a seven, and a five. Let's move them to decimals. Over here, if I move this to tenths, I multiply this by two, I multiply that by two, I have negative eight tenths, boom. So I have two of them, slam dunk. Did you see how quickly I did that one? Okay, so I have two of them that are in decimals. Let's make sure I did it right, I did. Then you're left with just one, which is usually the case, maybe one of them, six, divided by seven, I'll bring it down here, it's a negative. I'll go like this, seven into 60, is it an eight? It is. I don't know, I have to keep going because this one's an eight. So I go eight times seven is 56, by the way, seven into 40, is it five? And remember, it's a negative. So the three values, that I'm comparing are those three. Which one is the least? Which one is furthest to the left? It's this one, which came from right there. Correct? It is. So when you look back at the choices, you see number 12 and you go, boom, there she is. I'd like you to try 13 on your own. Lauren says that this number is greater than this number. Do you agree with her? Take a look at these. Either move them back to decimals or to fractions and figure out which one's greater or smaller. So all I want you to do is a little bit of work here. I did most of the problems on 10, three, okay? So I'd like you to do four, five, and six. I'd like you to do eight and nine, it's five problems. Six, seven, eight whole problems is all you need to do. Um, make sure you feel comfortable doing these, send me any questions that you have and we will go over them and move on on Thursday. That is the end of our meeting. Let's stop this. There.